morning, everyone. So once again, this morning, I'm reaching across beyond the borders of the United States into this amazing global community that we are all a part of. And I'm uh, reaching to London. And I'd like to introduce you to my friend for quite a few years. And I'm gonna pronounce her name in French because her parents are French and my stepfather's French, Céline Morin. And I think it sounds so much better, but she'll probably read it as Céline or Céline, <laughs> but I will never pronounce your name as Céline. It's Céline. Céline. Oh, Céline makes my heart Céline sing. Makes Morin. me think of my mother who I'm missing a lot at this time because she's in South Africa. Exactly. So thank you. Hello to everyone. Yeah, it's so great. I, I said, you know, thinking of these interviews I'm doing during this time and moving forward with this, probably no better person to talk to about finding calm and chaos than you. And we met in South Africa. Um, mm -hmm. I was in doing some work in Johannesburg and you were there and then we kept in touch and then I kept following you. I'm like, wait a minute, she's in Paris, she's in London, where is she, where is she living? <laughs> and then <laughs> two months ago, we met up in London because I, I was over there and it was just wonderful to see you again. Mm -hmm. So I, what I want everyone to know is what your work is. You know, what has your journey been? Because we met through nutrition, but your journey has gone in a completely different direction. And that yeah. journey will explain why we're talking today. Yeah, yeah. I did start in nutrition, so I qualified as a dietitian. And even before then, the journey, um, as a young teenager, I wanted to, to study medicine but I, didn't, I knew I didn't want to be a doctor. So it was in my explorations of what, what the medical faculties offered that I came across dietetics. And I knew instantly, that's it. That's my calling. And so I qualified as a dietitian, worked in private practice, doing clinical work for five years, and also, also started feeling frustrated because as you know, Amanda, most people see a dietitian once something is wrong. Yeah. Generally not, well, certainly not back then in the early 2000s proactively, you know, it was because they had diabetes or gout or right. a digestive issue. And I wanted to work in the proactive health space. And I had the opportunity to work with some large health insurers in South Africa. And that's what brought me into the corporate space. Mm. And that's how my, my journey in dietetics took a tangent. And now I do full-time workplace well-being, although now the workplace is even being redefined. It is. <laughs> Work is now home. Yep. <laughs> um, our, new, our new space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I continue to work a lot with leadership teams around managing energy and performance and their health within the context of work and how they can then leverage their, their impact, their influence to their employees. So you actually, I mean, I, I try to keep track of you. <laughs> but most of your work right now is in the United Kingdom, right, with corporations there. Yes, yes. So I moved from South Africa two and a half years ago to the UK right. permanently. And, uh, and I go to France a lot, which is why a lot of people <laughs> see me posting in Paris or the south of France. You are. Or campaign you are. Keep popping up in Paris. I mean, you've got my ideal life. Yes? Because it's very easy to go from London to Paris. So you can just yeah. get on the train pretty much and be right. there two and a half hours or whatever. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. would pop up and you're like, how come you're at a dinner party in Paris? <laughs> the most amazing food, <laughs> beautiful clothes, because that's what you would do in it. What, you know, just those parties were just beautiful. But um, mm. that may seem a little esoteric for some people, but in Europe, we live very closely to each other. So this is possible. So, mm. but, uh, and of course, so there's been a strong influence of my French heritage in the way I've approached not just my personal life, but my, 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 my career and continues to. I mean, when I, I did a, a workshop last week with a group of leaders and, you know, we, we started and ended off as if we were sharing a glass of bubbly together. And I said, what are we celebrating? And what are we going to toast in the midst of this chaos? Because, you know, it's the small things that matter right now. Uh, it's very true. And yeah. so let's talk about chaos. So let's talk about chaos before this current chaos. Um, maybe we, we're using a very kind of disturbing, unsettling word, but I think we can all relate to chaos. But prior to us all being isolated in our homes right now, you... I would imagine when you're working with the, we call it the C-suite or the um, you know, executive level in these organizations, I would imagine quite a lot of your work was trying to help them undo their own chaos. Uh, meaning maybe thought structures and organizing their life so that they could be 
kind of emotionally grounded, find well-being. I mean, it would talk to us about that. Maybe I'm sort of off on a tangent there, but I would imagine no, there's a reason why you are pulled into organizations to do the work you do. Because even uh, business owners who, who are intelligent, who have uh, IQ, EQ, they still suffer the consequence of being stressed rich and time poor. Uh-huh. So not having a lot of time. And then often it's the, it's the good habits that then go out the proverbial window, you know, the making time for personal reflection, for fueling correctly, for exercising, for getting enough rest. And so even though a lot of what I've taught, um, not all of it is rocket science. I mean, sure, there's some things like, especially in, in the field of nu- nutrigenomics and supplementation, people don't really know. But a lot of what I share is, you know, around basics, you know, how getting enough rest, spending time in nature, expressing emotions, hydrating, eating like an artist, so lots of fresh produce. Um, but even they, the business leaders need to not just be reminded, but also spend the time thinking about strategies that they can put into their busy lives in order to implement these good habits, because they don't happen by chance. We have to work at them. Just like any business works at any business strategy, health Health is a strategy. You know, you don't, you and I are not well by chance. It's because we make choices mm-hmm. and we have strategies and we put rituals into place that, that help us sustain the kind of well being that we do. So I would imagine that you've come across, I mean, obviously, I can back up on the question. When you work with organizations, they make a choice to bring you in, either because they say, well, this is a good idea, or they've identified there's some underlying issues within corporate culture at the executive level that has you come in. So here you are, you come in, but not everyone's going to be on board, right? So it's like, oh, do we have to go to this training? Is that, I mean, do you have to deal with that? It's like, okay, who's this person? <laughs> Mandatory training. I mean, does that, does that happen? And like unpack that for us. <laughs> it does actually. And fortunately, I think most of my work is not, um, it's not short and sweet. It, the minimum I generally get is a half day to do a masterclass. Okay. So, so you, you know, when, when you've got three or three and a half hours, sometimes four hours with a group of individuals, you've got time to build rapport. And I would say almost every session that I hold, there is somebody at the end when we do the checkout after we've done personal pledges, where they will actually say, do you know what, hands up? I was not looking forward to this. I didn't think I could learn anything. And, and thank you, because I have, and I did. And I, and I must say, I'm, I don't take it for granted that I, I, I seem to have quite a personable way of presenting, a style where people say, thank you for not being preachy. Exactly. Because health, health can be preachy. <laughs> and, and, and I guess it's because I, I really do walk my talk. You know, I... Yeah. I am very balanced. So I know who my target market is not. You know, I'd, I'm not going to be somebody who's going to say, you know, you've got to be very restrictive and um, do intensive exercise because that's not who I am. I drink a bit of alcohol. I eat a bit of sugar. I do the best I can 80% of the time. And, and that's my target market appreciates that. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Not everybody buys into it. <laughs> no, no, it's yeah. not easy. It's like, oh, so that's, it was amazing to me. Just how, it's not amazing how successful you've been, but you just really hit your stride. And I can see that, you know, from some of the videos that have been posted. Thank By the you. way, how do people find out about you? I mean, that today it was not about appetizing anyone, but um, yeah. you, people need to know about you. So how do they find you? Uh, word of mouth and it's a good question because this morning I was actually I attended an online sales course and the questions were you know you know what does your pipeline look like what are your strategies and I'm like what strategy you have a website you have a website I do I have a website which is my full name.com so Celine Morin.com and uh, I'm also quite active on social media uh, you are. So, Facebook and, and LinkedIn, especially. I really enjoy LinkedIn. I find it's, it's becoming much more of a tribe and oh, a interesting. real community. It's lovely. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. But you do actually, um, we'll put, when I put the, this video up on YouTube, um, those of you who don't speak fluent French and can't figure out how to spell uh, Celine's name, it'll be on there so you can find her. But she is awesome on Facebook because I followed you for years, but you know, you'll just stop in the middle of somewhere. Or you'll be traveling from somewhere, like on a train, and you're really tired. And you stop there and you say, you know, I'm really tired, everyone. 
but it's not like, oh, I'm really tired. It's, you, you know, and then it's some kind of miserable download. It's very, very insightful. So you never open your mouth unless you have something to share that leaves some people saying, that's a good thought. I mean, never thought about that. You know, everything from your vulnerabilities to, hey, I have this thought. Thank you, Amanda, because I, you know, I'm still refining what, what my purpose is, but I, my purpose goes something like this, is that I'm here on this planet in the, at this time to inspire others to enrich the quality of their lives. Exactly. exactly. So that's, that, that, that permeates everything I, I do, how, mm -hmm. how I choose to wake up in the morning and how I yeah. choose to maybe do a Facebook or a LinkedIn post. You lead a very purposeful life. Not mm. that you sit there and say, okay, um, I'm going to think about every single thing I'm going to say, but you really live with intention. The two go together, right? Purposeful yeah. intention. Yeah. So let's talk about that because, you know, obviously a lot of people's routines have gone out the window. I, I think mm. we're a little further ahead than you are in the, in, in the U.S. Not, not in, ter in terms of we've been isolated a tiny bit longer. I think that really the hammer came down in the U.K. What, last week or the week before. Yeah. So what I'm seeing from my colleagues is week one is dreadful. <laughs> you know, especially if you have kids at home, they're ready to kill each other. Week yeah. two, they start to be friends. And week three, everyone's best friends. So people have sort of started to find a routine. But life goes on and the chaos is still there. We're, we yeah. we come into chaos and somehow or other we got to claim out of it. So in this chaotic moment, there's an opportunity to regroup and revisit and get a handle on some things. So how, how can we help people with that? I mean, I think some people have just landed on their feet sort of, but they're still swimming upstream or still swimming mm -hmm. underwater. So where to from here? I feel that the first place to start is with self-compassion. And mm. you almost, if you aren't feeling bizarre at times or unwell, or if your behaviors haven't changed or your, your outlook or your moods don't, then something's wrong because we should be feeling odd. We should be feeling a, perhaps a sense of not understanding or, um, I mean, I found in week one where it was almost as if on an inspiration, I would feel inspired and everything's going to be okay. And there's a reason for this. And what better time than to be an ambassador for well-being? And then in the same breath on the exhale, I would go into like a pit of despair where like I'd be angry and frustrated and scared mm -hmm. and sad for the world. So we would never had an experience like this. And, and our parents so may have. Of, of yes. our age, I'm a, a little uh, yes. older but than But in you. our generation, yeah. Yes, our generation, but, our parents did. It was called the World War, right? Or some other, something related to that yeah. in the years yeah. after that. But most people have not been through this. It is normal to fear this range of fear and love, oh. which is, you know, like fear... Um, I was reflecting actually on it, how it, it, it's all about the base of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's it is. Where, you know, our survival has been threatened and it's by this external, external force that we can't even touch and feel. It's not tangible. You know, it's like the virus. Is, yeah. It's, it's omnipresent. And, um, and then there's a lot of us finding the, the love and the joy and choosing to see the good in it. And, and you can't ignore some of the good, like what's happening around the planet and nature and seeing Correct. humanity pull together. I mean, that is magnificent. But still, there's this range. So I think the starting point is give yourself permission to be on the spectrum with no judgment. And it can change. I mean, I'm finding in the beginning, um, I was having almost every hour or two, I'd have a it felt like I was on at sea and I'd have a high and then I'd have a low and then a high and a low. Now it feels like the mornings are highs. I've noticed a pattern for me and you know, it may be different for anybody else. My lows are in the afternoon, mm. but they seem to be a little bit shorter. And so I think it's important to start with self, some self-awareness and self-compassion and understand that the people in your home with you and outside, all of us are going to be different. We're all going to respond to the stress because chaos is stress and the stress response is very different. Some of us want to attack it and fight it. I've noticed that I just want to withdraw. I mean, I'm sleeping for nine yeah. hours a night and I would sleep longer if I'd let myself. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's, you know, what I'm hearing from it, and it's really interesting. It's, it's almost like, I love the idea of self-compassion, 
um, it's almost like a grieving process. Yes, it right? is. It is. It is. I, we have lost, we will never gain some of the things that we've lost. True. And currently, we're not only losing our immediate freedom, because we, we've been told to stay home and not move around, but there's, there's a lot more on, on a metaphysical level attached to that. You know, like how much of our freedom are we going to lose after Ooh. this? Will we ever just be able, will I just be able to travel to South Africa or like you said, just jump on a train and go to France? Like, mm. I, I don't know. And, and health. I mean, our life is at risk. Whether even though I'm, I'm reasonably young and healthy, I've had thoughts of what if. That's scary. And that, that's a grieving. I mean, we're confronting death. Uh, yeah, we are. And, um, if we are, boy, that's, it's an interesting thought. Um, and many of us are able to kind of acknowledge that and move forward. Right. Say, so, okay, yes. Yeah. There are people, one of my biggest concerns, and I'm actually going to be talking with a colleague of yours and mine in South Africa uh, next week, um, that some people prior to this, because of the world we live in, their genes don't allow them as you know, um, they don't allow them to find happiness, even in good times. So they really do suffer from anxiety and the blues and depression. And it really is their biochemistry. Um, and hopefully moving forward in the field of genetics, we can help people find a much better resolution than uh, simply medications. Um, but that being said, some people will not come out of this chaos in a good place. You know, it will have amplified their feelings of anxiety, depression, isolation, loneliness. So where do we go? You know, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a big question I have because I have a lot of concerns around that because we weren't doing well going into this. Now we have an amplified situation. So um, I guess there's two questions. For people who may not be affected by that, you know, how do you move forward from this point having gone through this in a process of compassion and letting yourself grieve. That's kind of one journey, but there's another journey for people who may not have dealt well, be coping well before this. I don't know if you can answer both those questions. The first would be for people who, you know, this have not been affected by the blues, anxiety, depression. Now you're in this compressed space. What next? How do you move to the light again? Yeah. Well, I seem to think that anybody who thinks that they're not affected I think we all are because humanity is. So even if I'm generally quite an optimistic person, mm -hmm. but I, you know, the people I'm, I'm close to, not all of them are managing well. So it's also, that's where um, empathy is so important. Mm -hmm. So as part of emotional intelligence, to be able to put yourself in somebody else's shoes um, and feel what they feel. And I guess for, for me, I, I always, I always go back down to the basics and the fundamentals and say, well, what, what can you do and right. what can you control? So things like you, you can, most of us at this point in time can still control and manage how we're sleeping, how we're choosing to eat, if we're doing a bit of exercise mm -hmm. and, and trusting that we know that things like moving when you wake up in the morning. So doing a form of exercise before you let the outside world in through social media <sighs> is one of the best ways to manage your mood, at least for the first few hours of the day. Very you know? true. And things like having some kind of gratitude practice. So even if it is as a family at the dinner table to sit and express one or two, maybe three things that can be really small that you're grateful for for the day, that can start telling your mind to, that there are things amongst the chaos and the stress. Yeah, that's true. I've actually thought of in my own house putting up, you know, one of those big sort of whiteboards, big, you know, big sticky papers, you know, in the pan as they walk into the pantry. But it's a gratitude wall that nice. makes you write down and just stop and think. Because as you said, we can go so fast in this online world, mm -hmm. um, into social media, whatever. You just get busy in your day and you don't, even though you worked out this one, you don't stop for that moment of gratitude where you actually acknowledge it by writing it down. And I find what, what's helped me with that, with that is I've, I've kept um, a gratitude journal. So I bought my, one, one of those five year ones. Yeah. One to year five. And I have it next to on my bedside table and in the morning or the evening, depending when I think about it, I'll then 
write down three or four things that I'm grateful for. And mm. I can't tell you the joy I get. It's like um, it happened th this morning because I reflected on this day a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. And I was able to send some WhatsApps to people saying, hey, today, three years ago, we were having lunch or we were doing this. And so there's, there's another way, no matter what your constitution is, we know that generally it makes us feel good when we help others. And helping others right now can be as simple as a message to somebody yeah. that you care about or that you haven't spoken or thought about. Or, and also the strong ones, I find... It's, it's um, like these business owners and CEOs, for instance, you know, if everyone thinks that they're okay, but it's, it can be lonely for them too. And so yeah. think of the people in your family, in your greater circle, your colleagues that might always seem chirpy and happy, but they sometimes can be the ones that are really struggling. That is so true. And I've seen, as I look across my own community, if I could, of people uh, I know, um, professionals, and I've seen such a high and low for them because, you know, nobody could predict what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, from a business perspective, it's been so interesting because one of the things I'm going to switch just to business, yeah. one of the things that I've seen has been so, so important, but you learn this as you get older, is don't have all your eggs in one basket. Maybe it's the same in life. You know, if, you, if your sole focus is on running a marathon, other things if the marathon's taken away from you, what do you have left? That's just an example. And I kind of saw that in business. It's, and it takes a while to figure that out, that um, spreading yourself, not spreading yourself thin, but spreading yourself in different areas allows you to find balance if the rug gets pulled out from yeah. underneath you. And we've gone through globally since 2008, or probably at least since 2012, we've gone through such amazing times. It's been such a time of wealth, I get financially, right? Yeah. Um, that all of a sudden when that stops, you're left with where people are. I mean, all they've ever known some people in business um, has been this amazing six or eight years. You know, the whole online community, the whole membership or subscription base, it's, the world has just stopped the way you knew it. That has to be quite challenging. Indeed, indeed. And I think a lot of, paradigms are, are never going to be the same again. I think exactly what you've said, just in terms of business and risk is um, not just diversifying, but I, but I also think people are going to start thinking about if, if, if my life is so precious, because I think my, most of us have been confronted with how short life is and what really matters is not only the diversification, but am I doing things that really squeeze out the juice in my life? You know, mm. how can I work and spend more time with my kids? Because there's a possibility that that I, that I won't have that forever. Yeah, you know, I think about it this a lot that, you know, we're not gonna suddenly get to day one again. It's like, okay, today's the day we can just walk out the door and everything is going to be normal. Yeah. It's not, I mean, for first it's gonna be a very slow entry into whatever this new world is or the world as we thought we knew. And we're starting to see that in China now. I think you start to read blogs. Well, you know, there was one lady, um, she was American actually, um, was teaching in China. Um, but she said, yeah, kind of day one, the door opened, I went out and she said some of the stores were open, but many of them still said like happy Christmas or happy new year, because that was kind of when the yeah. hammer came down. Right. And it's like, things were stopped in time, yeah. but other stores were open and, and that's going to be quite, um, I can't think of the word jarring, I think for some people, all of yeah. us. Yeah, indeed. And that's where potentially keeping a sense of, um, and I know this is not always easy to put into practice, but to keep a sense of curiosity mm. and playfulness and lightness. This is a very serious situation. So I'm not saying let's not honor the fact that it is um, very serious, but when we stay curious, which means asking questions, it just keeps us in a learning mindset, an open accepting mindset. Um, and yeah, and asking maybe more conscious questions, like a question that, I, and I got this from um, a, a, a Chinese practitioner, Dr. Nick Haynes. He said, after doing 50,000 consultations, he has this reframing question guideline. And the question that helped me get out of a funk <laughs> last week was, why is it entirely possible that dot, dot, dot? Uh so I asked myself, because I was, I was quite worried about my parents in South Africa and the fact that they're so far away and I can't get to them. And if 
if and when the virus really explodes there, it's not going to be easy. So I, I started saying, why is it entirely possible that my parents will be fine? And then I came up with all these scenarios that uh -huh. even if they got sick, that why they would be okay. Because um, I could feel that I was cascading and spiraling into the stress response, which as you know, is just horrific for our genetics and everything. <laughs> you know, we just end up, um, yeah, it's, you just lose big picture thinking. I could feel my heart racing. I was incredibly tearful. Yeah. And once I started reframing and asking the question like that, and the other question I, I asked myself was, why is it normal for me to be feeling either sad or angry or frustration? Because we're not living in normal times. So it's yeah. good to actually acknowledge that it's okay to feel that way. That can also then calm down the nervous system, which can then help you to just start thinking more creatively, more open-mindedly, and just keep what I call more of an expansive heart. Exactly. So I love this idea of these curiosity questions. So um, from the, the, the individual that you quoted. So is there a collection of curiosity questions or should we follow you on Facebook so we can say, what are Celine's, Celine's um, oh, merci beaucoup. curiosity question today? Because it's great. It gets you out of the funk <laughs> it gets you out of uh, how many deaths today or you know which which communities closed down today or done this or done that yeah i love yeah. it i'm gonna make a note of that i think that's um posting some curiosity questions and then of course um the doctor that i refer to has got a half an hour free webinar okay. on, con on conscious questions and he includes um quite a few examples and they're beautiful. They just, I've always been somebody who likes to reframe things. So yeah. when I can feel this is not serving me, I'm panicking, I'm anxious, I'm not myself. I, it's a skill that I've, that I've taught myself because every time I do it, I feel better. So it's a bit like having chocolate, I guess. Yeah. So, it's that, it's that, it's, yeah. so uh, that's something that I'd recommend is as and when life starts to uh, draw us out again, but things don't quite seem right. Is to stay curious by asking open, conscious questions. Oh, I love that. Well, we definitely need to see those because I would find that very useful myself. Mm -hmm. um, because what I'm seeing, and I'm just going to jump in with my own experience. A couple of things that are very interesting to me is in chaos, you can suddenly find a new routine that's not healthy. Um, and what I saw is you can get caught in a new cycle because I'm a citizen of the world like we all are. And you and I have lived in different places in the world and I want to know what's happening in the world. So I found myself constantly looking at what's happening in England, what's happening in South Africa. And it wasn't healthy because it's the same bad news <laughs> pretty much right now. And you become a little bit transfixed and obsessed with it. Um, and so breaking that, I realized that as much, th these are not normal times for news and the news is generally not useful. Yeah. So, so what I find has helped me is take two or three points in your day. I wouldn't recommend more than that, where you then sit with a cup of tea and you then take that time to maybe go through social media or the news. And in general, I'd rather not look, at, I haven't been looking at the news. I've got one or two trusted resources, people that I know and can trust and I listen to what they do and I go to the government websites there you go. And, and I stay off social media and what whatsapp I've you know archived and muted a lot of conversations and if anything comes up that seems to be up building I keep track of that I've got a little personal folder where I save and then I watch up building things oh that's that's great yeah you know, and I'm sure you'll agree the bad news is going to find us we don't have to go find find yeah, it yeah we don't have to find it and you're right social media even if you just want to follow your friends I mean people are just posting whatever mm -hmm. um and it's going to come up in your feed and stop you even though you weren't looking for something from the BBC or whatever mm -hmm. you know and so, so I now, do have my trusted outlets go ahead so now would be a good time to almost spring clean your phone is perhaps to, you know, move apps not on your home screen so that as you put your phone on, you don't see, oh, you know, there's 15 WhatsApps and there's 31 notifications here. And even I've turned off notifications. So even yes, after, thank you. I have to actively open and that's why I can sit and have a cup of tea mid-morning or mid-afternoon. And I try and always do something that feeds my soul, my well-being in the morning and then do something constructive towards work and, and life and earning a living because that makes me feel empowered. 
And I do that before I read any kind of news. That's yeah. And because your business, I love that. Um, and your business of course is ongoing. Uh, like mine, we're in the middle of projects. It didn't stop. Yeah. What about people whose world did stop? Um, you know, they are the ones, it's the first of the month, first of April today. Um, yeah. And depending where you are in the world, maybe you've got some kind of um, payroll relief or mortgage relief for some other people, the rent is due. And they put food on the table, their world changed. If you're a hairdresser, right? Or a massage therapist, anyone who's deemed, they're actually essential, right? But now they're not essential, you have no choice. Yeah. The world stopped. How do they get a grip on the anxiety, the worry, the you know, do you, do you follow the same route you talked about, you know, ask yourself some of these curiosity questions or? I mean, they can help, but I know that it's not easy. I think the key is to, is to first of all, acknowledge that the stress response is very real and it can, it can be a self-perpetuating cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you allow yourself to spend too much time in a sense of anxiety or panic, it will likely worsen rather than ease off. So for instance, so one of the curiosity questions that I ask myself regularly is, how am I? And I try and always use two words. So I use one word to describe myself physically. So how, how am I in this moment? Am mm. I comfortable? Am I hungry? Am I cold? Am I tired? And then I also think of how am I emotionally? So um, how am I feeling with my heart or my thoughts? And then I will say, and how do I want to be? Because right now I'm feeling relaxed and comfortable. I'm actually really enjoying engaging with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm feeling present. And how do I want to be? Well, I don't want to change that, so it's fine. However, if you ask yourself that question and you see, oh, I'm feeling quite constricted and sad, and I, it's taken me ages, like I've reread the same paragraph in a magazine over and right. over. <laughs> I don't want to be in this stuck. I, I want to feel more light and free. Only then can you maybe make a choice to do something to help you feel differently. And then perhaps we can talk through some, some go-to things that you can do depending on what it is you want to achieve. Do you, do you have any particular questions or almost like touch points that where you check in with yourself? Yeah, I'm not as good as that as you are, but um, I know innately when things are off balance, uh, I know innately what my body needs. I'm thinking more from a nourishment and food perspective. I know when I need to move. So it's a little bit more, not as deep as you, but I also know when I need to go outside and connect, you know, so, yeah. uh, so I have those cues. It's a little bit different, but what I am seeing here, having, you know, talked with you over the years and a wonderful interview I did with Dr. Kashal Nanavanti, who that I, I really want you to meet because he is very much, at the same level as you, as stopping and thinking and writing things down, thinking about what you can control. Um, but having said all that, for me, um, this is a time for me to stop, um, really stop and regroup. Um, not figure out what's important, I figured that out, but mm -hmm. I love the idea of the curiosity questions. It's, it's a great time for me to go deeper. Yeah, and I think, so I would note, I feel the same, Amanda, yeah. but I have a lot of colleagues in my space, and because I'm part of several WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups, there's a lot of people who are not doing that. They're actually full-on creative mode. Yes. I know somebody who's written like 80,000 words already, and and my ego was starting to say, oh my God, like, Celine, you're not doing enough. Yeah. Get up, and, do, and I'm like, no, like, yeah. no, I want to grieve, I want to be sad, I want to just stop. Okay. So I think, and maybe, and for those individuals, that might work, but part of me wonders if they're not going to get to burnout. They will. I, I, I'm saying, that, oh, forgive me, but I yeah. have exactly, feel exactly the same. And you know, what I've realized in this journey, I know this isn't about you and me, but I think it's about sharing because people can relate. We are, mm -hmm. none of us are perfect. Right before, and I think I shared with you in London that I was with, this was, I was in London with um, Celine, uh, end of January so uh, before any of this really started to spin up um, and it was just a fabulous time um, 
but I think I shared with you then that we, I was going to come back, you know, I was going on to New Zealand, Australia to work. Well, of course that got cut off, but this year I was going to sell my house, move up to Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, with my partner. And, um, you know, we were jumping into the next phase of life and I was going to continue on working. Well, we spent a lot of time getting ready for that. You know, pretty much the day Wisconsin, where I live, shut down was the day we were putting a house on the market. And it, I didn't have to grieve about it. I was, that's what's been so interesting for me. It's been, okay, can't control that right now. And it's like for once in my life, I said, this actually doesn't bother me. If we don't sell our house, we have somebody coming to see it. It was crazy, but they are th this week. Fine. If that doesn't transpire, okay, the goalposts get moved, but it's actually fine. And for probably one of the first times in my life, I'm not panicked, I'm not stressed, I'm not trying to control the future, which means something has shifted for me and I'm okay with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. I mean, I, I also find communicating is key. Like the, and especially if you're isolated, either on your own or just you and somebody else or your small family is also, you know, be careful of who you connect with because you yeah. also... It's good to ask yourself those questions that I just spoke about. You know, how am I and how would I like to be? Especially when you feel your energy change, because you might engage with somebody on a regular basis. It could be a friend or a colleague who's just very negative. Uh, and yeah. You can ask yourself, actually, I'm always quite anxious or angry after I connect with that person. And I'm not saying don't speak to them, yeah, but you need but... to speak to them every day. You know, so I th we need to be putting ourselves first. Because right now, if you show up at your best, you'll be the best version of whoever you are in your family and in your greater social network and then as a citizen on earth. No, and uh, Yeah. Yeah, I was going to... I just lost my, my thought. I was going to you spoke, spoke, spoke about. <laughs> oh, no, I do that all the time. Especially in an interview. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Well, yeah, it'll come back. <laughs> I think that one of the things, and I have noticed this, and I've done it in my own life, um, is when you get in a pinch or when the anxiety level goes up, one of the things we try to do is fix it. And the, one of the ways we try to fix it and patch it up is to work harder and harder and harder and harder and, far, and harder, be more and more and more pr productive. So I actually see that as a stress response, not for everybody by any means. People can be yeah. hyper productive. But when you can't control anything and the only thing you can't control is how you work, you can really spin up. And yeah. Yeah. Very interesting observation. Yeah. So I, I think the, the pausing is excellent. It's if, I mean, the whole earth, I think, is wanting us to actually stop and pause. Yeah. Oh, and, it, and something that I, I've been doing that's been helping me, and I've posted a few times about it, and I've, and I've had some good feedback, is every day I try and do three small things towards my, my well-being. And the structure that's worked for me, because I, I work well when I, when I have structure, because I can't just always just think of ideas. So okay. something from my head, something from my heart, and then mm -hmm. something from my hara, which, as you know, is the Japanese word for gut. So in terms of my head, I try and think, so the head is related to our thoughts. It's those curiosity questions, you know, did, did I check in with myself? What kind of thoughts did I have today? Should mm -hmm. I reach out? Oh, that's what I was going to say about building community is that the more now's the time not to, to be speaking freely with people and sharing how you feel. Mm. I mean, I, I phoned up a friend and quite unexpectedly, we both ended up crying on the call. Aww. And then by the end, we were giggling and it felt like I'd had therapy. It was, it was a 20 minute, 25 minute conversation, but we laughed and we cried and we both had a sense of releasing. Mm. So, you know, reach out and speak to people. And there's also a lot of charities that are still working now around mental health. Yeah. I know in the US, in the UK, like the Good Samaritans and Mind, that you can reach out and call if you can't find somebody in your home or in your close circle to actually speak to. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's important. So I, so I try and do something towards positive thinking. And, and at, at the moment, it's actually, I, I read an interesting book. So I bought a book about the human body that's Ooh. this thick. And I started to read that. So I try to learn something. And then for my heart, that's where I bring in a lot of my breathing techniques. Mm. Or I think of, is there somebody that I care about that I can reach out to? Meditation um, is also very grounding and good for the heart, especially yeah. if you think of anything that makes you feel joyful or love. We know we can measure that that actually has a beneficial effect on the electromagnetic yeah. um, field around the body. 
And then for, for my hara or my gut, that's around uh, how I eat, how I move, and am mm. I getting enough rest? So one small thing for your head, something for your heart and something for your tummy, your gut or your body, if you can do three small things every day right now, that's enough. Like you don't need to be running a marathon. You don't need to be meditating for an hour and doing loads of yoga or finishing huge projects. I, I, for me, I'm giving myself, that's my measure of success. I love it. So it's almost like that can be your new routine. Like, yeah. yeah. Something for what did I do for my head? What did I do for my heart? And what did I do for my gut, my hurrah? I yeah. love that. And then yeah. maybe one curiosity question if it's even in your bandwidth. Yeah. Give yourself permission, right? To just be. But for so many of us, it's, it's be. What's that? <laughs> We talked about be present, you know, I've got things to do. Well, now you don't. And, and in that, there's so much self-inquiry, you know, and the beginning, the beginning of anything different is always the hardest, right? When you start a new exercise regime or if you start a new job or anything new. And like you said already, week one, you know, families were potentially at each other's you know, throats and it wasn't easy, but you will establish an, a new form of being. And so just trust and, and, and trust that as much as you can. Yeah. I've loved this. I mean, I've known you quite a long time and this has been like the best conversation ever. <laughs> <laughs> just, Amanda, thank you to you for reaching out because this, con yeah, yeah, this has been a great com conversation. And, and can you, this is something I'm going to celebrate today is absolutely we no longer have a dietitian to dietitian peer relationship. Like we now have this ability to see each other as just holistic human beings. And that can be for anybody. I know, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, this conversation has brought me so much joy and I can't wait to share it. I am like this. You know, it's, it's just, there's, you've got so many good points, um, even for me personally, but just like, here's what I wanted from talking with you. Give people something to think about, some, some structure, or another way to look about where they are right now, whatever you're doing in your life. Could um, I share a few more practical things? Please, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> we're, I think we're going to do this once a week. You're going to have like a multi-million dollar following. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead two more things is i've noticed with myself and with a lot of other people that i know that sometimes with the stress response we we can feel very lethargic and tired and with mm. and feel withdrawn or we can feel like you just said like we want to go out there and create and work and stay distracted and stay busy so if you notice your tendency between one of those two and it may be something different because we are all unique but generally i've seen that those, those are two common behaviors is if you're feeling um perhaps like you're in your mind a lot and you're racing and you're wired and you and you and you're going 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 is to do things that will ground you mm. so literally stopping and sitting on the ground uh, yes and maybe listening to a guided meditation or visualization getting into nature and if you can actually taking your socks and shoes off and touching the ground mm. on the earth or the grass and if you can't do that, maybe feel some sunlight out the window even on your body um, and eat food that's nourishing and warm. That's also in terms of Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese mm. and like that, that grounds you and try and just be talk slower, listening to slower music, grounding. And then the opposite, if you find that you're quite lethargic and tired and you just want to nap is to do something that would lift you up, physically, like a skip or listen oh, to sure. a dance song yeah. um, and actually look up towards the sky. There's a lot of embodiment around this. Mm. And the music is something that's also shifted my mood. I'll play fast driving music if I'm feeling a bit sluggish and I don't want to take a nap right now. And I'll also use calming classical low vibrational music if I'm feeling very hyper. So at night, for instance, to go to sleep, I've been doing that. I love that. You are just such an inspiration. <laughs> you are. You know, it's like, it's like you, I opened up a little gift and out popped my friend. And, you know, it was so <laughs> just fantastic piece of advice. Like for me personally, um, I, you know, I, and that's not why I wanted to talk to you. It wasn't about what I wanted, but just such practical. 
hmm. ideas that we just have to do this routinely. I'm sorry, but I'm going to grab you. <laughs> we all need to be reminded. Even I do. I don't get this right. I sometimes need to, you know, take my own medicine, so to speak. And we're in this together. We're all connected. I mean, um, the trees. Um, I was listening to um, Rob Bell, who runs the Robcast podcast, and he was saying how, you know, the trees have got root systems that communicate over vast distances, a bit like the, the elephants over hundreds of kilometers and miles. Yes. So as, as humanity, our, our, our network, our tapestry of well-being is being agitated. And so we are all connected in this and we can uplift one, one another together. We can. And you know what? Let's do this again. Have you come back and let's talk about how we can uplift each other together. Because I love the idea of, you know, uh, aspen trees that we have in the U.S. or trees, they, they, they're very interconnected, like rhizomes underneath the earth. Yeah. And like you yeah. said, um, uh, elephants can communicate across hundreds of miles, things that we just don't even know as humans. But mm. there's a way, there's very good will come out of this. How we create good out of this is going to be really important. So let's come back and talk about that. Great. And in the meantime, if you need to cry or shout or punch the air do it <laughs> do it people. but you guys have great ideas I, th I think you need to kind of summarize this like in a blog we're gonna put it out there say you said do this do that it's just great 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 thank you Amazing. and thank you to you amanda you're like a beacon of light oh you. you are too my friend yeah love you thank you bye bye